They didn't believe that HIV caused AIDS. And so Law and Order, Neil Baer is the executive producer of Law and Order SVU, and he's also the co-chair of Hollywood Health and Society's board. So we have a very close relationship with him. And he's very committed to global health. He has a program in Mozambique. He works with AIDS orphans. He gives them cameras and teaches them how to both shoot film, produce their own documentaries, and to take stills. But anyway, so back to this show. You'll see, um, listen for the talking points, the messages on the same one you saw on Grey's Anatomy about preventing mother-to-child transmission of HIV. It's called Retro. Yes, it is a man kids. What's happened to her is a crime. Kids only get this sick when they're not treated. They're treated for what? HIV. She has AIDS. Yeah. Advanced. And her parents didn't do a damn thing about it. Oh, well, we checked your baby's DNA and it matches yours. So why don't you sit down? Why'd you lie to corrections and say that you didn't have a child? Because I didn't want social services to find out about her. They take your baby when you're high. So I had her at home, never got a birth certificate. You tell the father? I don't know who he is. She's a trick baby, but that doesn't mean that I don't love her. And why are you here? Is Antonia okay? Well, she's in the hospital with AIDS. Which means you're HIV positive. But I quit using when I was pregnant. I did everything I could to keep her clean. Except taking antiretrovirals before she was born, which could have prevented this from happening. But I never meant to hurt my little girl. Ida Jala? Police? What's this about? They are here to see me, Ida. Our green cards have expired. We were afraid we would be sent back to Gambia. We didn't know what to do. Antonia just got sicker and sicker. When the mother went to jail, she gave her baby to this no. couple, her neighbors, to take care of. Her to die. And the, and we loved her like she was our own. Everything was fine until she stopped eating. We thought she missed her mother. Then I saw the white spots in her mouth. And I knew it was AIDS. How? Many people have died in my country. I raised my sister and she had the same sickness. So you knew how sick Antonia was. Why didn't you bring her to the hospital? Because the AIDS medicines are poison. Who told you that? Our president. But he has found a cure. He rubs a green paste of herbs on his patient's chest. Hold on. The president of Gambia does this himself? Every Thursday. And then he gives them the bitter yellow brew and two bananas. And they're cured. Did you try to cure Antonia? No. President's recipe secret. So we went on the internet and found a doctor who believes as we do. He gave Antonia vitamins, but she just got worse. Okay, this doctor, what's his name? I also instructed the Morongs to give her yogurt. Yogurt for AIDS? Are you out of your mind? Not every patient with HIV needs medication. Antonia Suarez presented with a minor case of thrush, and I chose an alternative treatment, which has worked very well. Well enough that she nearly died from it. And then, as I instructed the Morongs, they should have come back for more therapy. Like what? Pudding? No. Antifungal medication, as any medical professional would prescribe. Now, a medical professional would have given the child its HIV-positive medicine on the first visit. You're a quack. We're through. How many people have you cured with vitamins and yogurt? I have patients waiting. God help them. Want to see some hocus pocus? Check out Dr. Demento's website. The truth about HIV. There's no proof that HIV causes AIDS. The anti-HIV medications Big Pharma makes will kill you. This guy is a fruitcake. According to Hutton, AIDS is a global conspiracy funded by pharmaceutical companies to make big bucks. And commit genocide. My parents believe the government created HIV in a lab and the CIA spread it in the prisons to kill blacks and gays. How does a doctor believe this crap? He's an AIDS denier, part of a misguided minority who believes that HIV doesn't cause AIDS and that AIDS itself doesn't exist. Two-thirds of the world's HIV-positive kids get infected during pregnancy or at birth from the mother. The rest acquire it during breastfeeding. Okay, so Susan could have passed the virus to Lisa either way. 
It's a shame. HIV positive women in this country have a 98% chance of having a healthy baby if they take antiretrovirals during pregnancy and put the child on meds after birth. Which Susan probably didn't do because she thinks HIV is harmless. She put Lisa's life in danger by breastfeeding her and by withholding medication when Lisa got sick. And since any reasonable person knows HIV causes AIDS, that's criminally negligent homicide. Okay. So we wanted to learn about the impact on viewers. One of the things we're looking at is um, we're looking at how viewers prioritize global issues. For example, we, construct, we constructed an index to look at whether people prioritize global health or if they would choose defense. I mean, there are a lot of different global priorities. And what we found, and this we did a pretest before the story aired, a week before it aired, and we did a test a week after the storyline aired. And we found that this storyline increased knowledge of HIV <coughs> among those who had never been tested for HIV and AIDS. It increased awareness of AIDS deniers for females. And, the, and the, we found an association between HIV knowledge and increased global health priorities for females. So because our grant goes for three years, and we're hoping that we'll get a lot of, uh, at least four global health storylines per year, we're going to keep repeating this type of research to see if with multiple exposures, there is an increasing uh, prioritization of global health um, among viewers. That's what we're looking at. Okay, so um, Hollywood Health and Society has a TV monitoring project. And I met with some students today at lunch. We talked about this. Um, we actually train graduate students in how to code like we actually pay them to watch television. They think this is the best job they've ever had in their lives. And we look at the top 10 to 20 scripted shows. Um, let me show you. So these are the top shows according to Nielsen's ratings um, from 2006. And Nielsen ratings divides viewers into general audience, African American, and Hispanic viewers. And these are the top the most popular shows among those three audiences. The boxes in white are the ones they have in common. So those are the, the ones shared across the three uh, groups of viewers. The ones in purple are the ones that are unique to those viewing groups, okay? So what we code for are about 70 different health topics. So our students watch the episode once through and then they watch again with a whole stack of coding sheets. And so they're, they're looking at, you know, do they talk about HIV? Do they talk about diabetes? Do they talk about prevention? Do they talk about diagnosis and treatment? Was there educational value? There are all these ways that they're trained to evaluate. It's like doing a health map of what kind of health we're seeing on TV. So we've recently added codes for um, the region of the world, for international topics, for the social determinants of health. These are things we hadn't coded for before. And we just did an analysis, a baseline analysis, of how much global health or international health are we seeing in these top scripted shows and TV. And if you look at this for the general audience category, only 1% of the episodes dealt with international health topics. Things like HIV and AIDS, TB, malaria, polio, maternal and child health, uh, tobacco cessation, those kinds of topics and less than 1% of the health storylines within the episodes watched by all audiences included any international aspect to them. The good news is within the 1% of storylines that had an international aspect to them, the educational content was moderate to strong in 38% of these episodes. So what that tells us is there's a lot of room for growth. We have our work cut out for us to actually get more global health topics into TV storylines. But the good news is if we're successful in doing that, we have a very good chance of having a higher level of educational value to those storylines. Um, this was just a question about cultural background of characters in these storylines. You know, uh, Nielsen rating divides these th into three groups. 
And we know that television is a primary source of health information for a lot of Americans, actually um, 26%. The heaviest consumers of TV, African Americans and Hispanics, are at disproportionate health risk. And the research suge suggests that we tend to pay greater attention to, identify with, and emulate those who we perceive as similar to us. So some of the conclusions from evaluations we've done on these storylines is that regular viewers learn from TV health storylines and they talk about the storylines and the health topics they see. And that viewers will seek more information when with hotline numbers or informational web links when they're linked to dramatic storylines. And we know that when health storylines are accurate, they can help to dispel myths and to promote health. And we know that viewers who identify more strongly with a character may have a stronger response. And we also know that sexual and reproductive health are very popular topics. This is, these are some shots from our um, Sentinel for Health Awards ceremony this year. We held it in early October. Um, and we have several rounds of judging. We collect the entries, then we go to the CDC and we group all of these TV episodes into categories, mental health, um, children's health, you know, reproductive health, and we have experts in those topics, subject matter experts, do a round of judging. We have all these criteria. And the winners of that first round, the ones that have the best technical content, go to the second round of judging, and that round is done in Hollywood. And in the second round, we're evaluating for entertainment value. And so the winners are the ones that have the best technical content and the best entertainment value. And so we gave out 13 awards this year. What I'm, I'm just going to mention, I didn't include any slides in this today because I, I talked about it yesterday in the class, is that Hollywood Health and Society is expanding globally. Um, we were invited by the UN, it's actually UNFPA, the United Nations Population Fund, to travel to the Middle East so I went to Oman and then a couple of months later to Egypt and I had a chance to meet with people from about 15 different Arab countries and Balkan states. And um, I presented the Hollywood Health and Society model and they've asked us to set up a center for entertainment education for the Middle East so that they can learn how to work with Arabic language programming to get accurate health content and other messages of social value about climate change, environmental health, uh, you know, peace building, conflict resolution, really any social issue into their entertainment media. So we know that at EE saves lives, improves health, and enhances well-being globally. So thank you. Should we take questions? Let's uh, do about five minutes uh, worth of uh, formal Q&A. And after that, uh, those who, you know, who have things to do or uh, can, you know, can, yeah, do their things. And then uh, the informal conversations may continue hmm? after that. So uh, Sandra is, uh, willing and open to fielding questions or taking comments. I know a lot of the shows are on cable, general audience. Well, how are you guys working with the regular cable shows? We, we work primarily with network television, but we do work with some of the cable shows. So it's really a combination. And we work primarily with scripted television. We aren't working with reality right now because our focus has been with writers and with reality show, you don't have a script. Yeah. Um, I'm going to start working also with the movie industry. Like, uh, it's a good question. Film. We do work with some uh, film. The, here's the thing with film. Now, our mission is to get accurate and timely public health